Every AC motor uses a rotating magnetic field, an invention that kicked off the Industrial Revolution. Can you guess how the RMF reached this stage? In this video, we'll travel through the minds of the geniuses behind the development of RMF. The greatest contribution can perhaps be attributed to Nikola Tesla, considered by many as the pioneering father of modern engineering, to understand how the design theories evolved over time. Our trip will take us all the way through to a glimpse of modern-day winding techniques and RMF production. Let's go! The idea of rotating magnetic fields first started with Walter Bailey. He used DC power supply, and this arrangement had electromagnets and commutator rings. Let's understand this RMF production in a step-by-step -step manner. When a direct current passes through an electromagnet, it creates a magnetic field with a specific orientation. If you add a second electromagnet, which is oppositely wound, magnetic field lines get connected between the opposite poles. Let's represent these newly formed magnetic field lines using an arrow. Now add one more such pair diagonally opposite to the first pair. The interaction between these two magnetic field lines will produce a resultant magnetic field line. Now let's de-energize the first pair, keeping only the second pair energized. The resultant magnetic field in this case will be as shown. If we energize both pairs again, this time reversing the polarity of current in one of the coils, the resultant magnetic field changes once again. In all four cases, the resultant magnetic fields have one thing in common and one thing altered. Did you spot what those were? In each case, the field lines have the same magnitude but different angles. In short, the resultant magnetic field rotates in a step size of 45 degrees. We have just seen the design of the first ever RMF. Further rotation can be induced by repeatedly switching the operation on and off in the same pattern. Walter added a copper disc on top to physically demonstrate the rotation. As the magnetic field changes, it induces eddy currents. Just as Michael Faraday had once predicted, the disc starts to rotate along with the RMF. Although a genius invention, there was a flaw in the design. Can you see what that might be? Rather than being a smooth rotation, the RMF has a jerky movement. It's safe to say this was not a particularly useful feature for an electric motor to have. This rocky ride is due to the use of DC power. The genius inventor of all time, Nikola Tesla, came up with his own idea of producing RMF using two-phase alternating currents. This idea is elaborated in his patent for induction motors in 1888. Coincidentally, the same year an intelligent inventor named Galileo Ferraris also introduced a similar way of producing RMF. Tesla's design was a clever modification of Walter's electromagnets. First on his list was to expel the commutators, which were notoriously tedious to operate. Next, he supplied alternating currents with an angular difference of 90 degrees between them. This means that the field produced by one coil is shifted in position in reference to the other. Wondering how that works? Let's take a closer look. First of all, let's consider the starting point. The current from coil A is a small positive value, whereas the current from coil B is a larger negative value. The individual magnetic fields produced by both the coils is as shown. If we add both fields together, we get this resultant field in the motor. Now, Hold that thought for future reference. Let's see what happens as the currents vary. In this instance, coil A carries a positive current of the highest magnitude, and the current in coil B is zero. At this moment, the magnetic field produced by coil A is the only field in operation. Finally, both the coil currents are positive and are at equal magnitude, creating a resultant field as shown. If you observe these three instances, you will find that Nikola Tesla's two-phase machine design produces a rotating magnetic field. While Tesla used his AC generator to make this phase shift possible, Galileo Ferraris used an inductor in one of the two coils supplied by a single-phase AC dynamo. Later on, Nikola Tesla's two-phase was increasingly popular due to the practical viability of his designs and the efficiency of the AC polyphase generators needed for these motors. We'll leave Tesla and Ferraris to battle this one out. Meanwhile, 
the story of RMF development is not over just yet. Back then, while the two-phase RMF was just born, Russian engineer Mikhail Dobrovolsky gave the world three-phase RMF. We will understand the three-phase RMF design logically, and by the end of this section, we will also understand why three-phase RMFs are superior to Nikola Tesla's two-phase RMF. Let's use a simplified winding design to understand the working of three-phase RMF. A three-phase current supply will vary with the time as illustrated in this arrangement. Now we need to find out how the resultant magnetic field varies due to the current variation. Let's freeze at this instant. The magnetic fields produced by all the coils are illustrated here. This can be easily deduced using the thumb rule. Now let's combine all these six magnetic field lines together to get the resultant magnetic field. In short, this is the shape of the RMF at this instant. Now let's vary the currents for a small time interval and freeze the scene. Remember that the field density is higher for conductors with larger currents. Let's trace the resultant path again. Comparing both instances, the resultant field has clearly rotated. Calculating for all other current instances, the magnetic field is seen to rotate one revolution for one cycle of current. And there we have it. That's how a three-phase rotating magnetic field actually rotates. So, to round up today's video, Let's decide who is the ultimate winner of rotating magnetic field systems. Was it Tesla or was it Dobrovolsky? Let's use the modern technique of finite element analysis to settle the vote. The simulation results from EMWorks 2D software make a clear case for why three-phase RMF designs are superior to two-phase designs. As you can see, the two-phase arrangement gives a dip or oscillation in the rotating magnetic field. In the three-phase design, these oscillations are effectively reduced. Now for a word on north and south pole notations of the RMF. Did you notice something a little weird about those? Here is what we are talking about. In a permanent magnet, north and south poles are defined as shown. Yet in the case of RMFs, it is defined in an opposite way. Have you ever wondered why? After all, the whole purpose of marking north and south poles is to make the analysis easier. In a permanent magnet, its external area is the useful area. However, for an RMF, the internal area or the magnetic field in the inner region is the most useful. If you consider the case of an alternator or an induction motor, this fact will be clear to you. The outside field of an RMF is never used to get any useful work. When you focus on this useful internal area of an RMF, it is quite logical to define the north and south poles as shown. Only if we mark the north and south poles as shown will we get the magnetic field direction correct in the inside area. So, hopefully that's cleared that up. Let's move on to the last part of our video, modern day windings. The modern day winding for the three-phase RMF is able to produce RMF with almost no oscillations. This fulfills the actual definition of an RMF which is a magnetic field of constant magnitude revolving in nature. One such modern winding which produces a four-pole RMF is shown here. A modern-day winding design is a broad subject. We need a separate dedicated video to get into it. This concludes our journey through the history of rotating magnetic fields and the minds of their great inventors. It is amazing to know how our ancestors developed winding designs which produce perfect RMFs just by using their imagination and precise calculations. If you enjoyed this video, why not hit subscribe to stay tuned for our next one. Thank you and see you next time.